Hey everybody, how you doing? Jeff here, back with another Diablo 2 Resurrected Guide. This is going to be for a full playthrough of Normal, and then how to prepare to move into Nightmare difficulty. So this is aimed more at new players, or maybe players that are stuck at a certain part of the game. I'm going to start just with some general tips about the game, and then talk about classes, and then the skills, and how I would build a character for each class. Uh, then I'm going to talk about each specific act, and maybe some difficult parts or things that people commonly get stuck on. And I'm also going to add the times in the description below, so be sure to check out those if you wanted to jump to a certain part of the game that you're stuck at. And then uh, I'm also going to remind you that I do have a quest guide for each quest in the game, so if you needed more specific information, you could check those out as well. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at each class and the skills that you might want to use. And I'm going to show what I prefer to do when I start each class. This is not the only way to do this. There are many options for all the classes, but this is what I prefer to do. And also, if you're new to the game, don't be afraid to experiment and try out some different skills. But I will say that towards the middle of normal and to the end of it, going into Nightmare, you will want to pick... Uh, one or two skills to focus on as your main attack. Otherwise, they're not going to do enough damage. So if we take a look at the Paladin here, uh, the way I prefer to play them is to get up in the middle of uh, the action and fight with Zeal, which is a melee attack, and then also use the offensive auras. So I start out pumping up Holy Fire as much as I can until I get to Holy Freeze, and I'll usually switch to using this at uh, in the, my low 20s. And then this can easily carry you through Normal and most of the way through Nightmare pretty easily. Uh, just pump up Holy Freeze, and then I also do it Synergy Resist Cold because this adds damage to Holy Freeze. For the Amazon, uh, there are some options for that as well. Bow and crossbow is viable. A lot of people like to use multi-shot, just shoot, shoot so many arrows across the entire screen, uh, and then into strafe I, I've used before. I generally prefer to go with javelin and spear, though. So as soon as I can get poison javelin, I'll pump that as much as possible to poison big groups of enemies to take them out. And, and then when I reach... Uh, the high enough level, I'll switch to Charge Strike for single target. So I'll use Poison for big groups and Charge Strike for single targets. Uh, and this will work for groups as well, but that's what I prefer to do. Eventually leading into Lightning Fury, which will just clear out huge groups of enemies very quickly. For Sorceress, there are a lot of options. She's got three elemental skill trees, uh, Lightning, Fire, and Cold. And for any build that you choose, you're going to want to pick up a couple key skills in different trees. One is Warmth in the Fire Tree that will regenerate your mana faster. In the Lightning Tree, you're going to want to grab Static Field, which will tear through high health monsters like bosses very quickly, uh, as well as teleport eventually, the king of movement for sure. And then uh, if we look at specific builds, uh, I usually start off with Fire Tree. I'll do Fire Bolt and Fire Ball and just pump both of those up. Uh, and that'll, that can take you the whole way. That's what I like to do. But eventually I do prefer Cold. My favorite is Frozen Orb. A lot of people do like Blizzard, which is a very, very good skill. I prefer Frozen Orb. So I will respec once I get to level 30 or low 30s and then switch everything over to Cold. Um, but if you wanted to go Lightning, Lightning can be very good also. There's uh, Lightning and Chain Lightning. That's very good. Uh, a lot of people in the Fire Tree like to go into Meteor. And you're also going to want to pick up the Mastery for each of the trees. If you're focusing on Fire, then pick up Fire Mastery. There's a Lightning Mastery if you're going on that tree, and there's a Cold Mastery if you're going on that tree. For a Necro, I prefer to make a Summoner. So under Summoning, I just go for Skeleton Mastery and Raise Skeleton. Uh, I've tried the Mages out. I never thought they were that great, so I generally just stick with the Skeletons. I also go a Clay Golem because he adds a little bit more tankiness as well as slowing enemies. So this can be really effective against harder elites and bosses, especially to slow them down. Uh, under Poison and Bone, I always grab Corpse Explosion. Once your skeletons get a kill, you can speed it along greatly by exploding that corpse and taking out big groups of enemies. And then under Curses, Amplify Damage right away so everybody does double damage, who's a melee attacker. And eventually I like to grab Decre Decrepify. Uh, it's not as much damage as Amplify Damage, but it also slows the enemies greatly to add that survivability. The Barbarian, I feel, is like one of the hardest starts, at least for me anyway. Um, Starting out, I feel like their combat skills aren't that great at lower levels. So really, I generally just grab Leap just for mobility more, like to jump across gaps and whatnot to save time. So when I start a Barb, I generally just pick a Mastery, either a Sword or Mace. And I usually go Mace because Maces get uh, an innate bonus 
damage to undead. So I'll generally use a mace as my main weapon and then just pump up that mastery. Uh, for war cries, I think the starting one is one of the most useful, howl. You get into a pack of enemies that surround you and you're in trouble, you can howl and they all run away uh, to save you. So that's generally how I play my barb uh, starting out. And then for a druid, when I start out, uh, I always make sure I grab Oak Sage from the Summoning Tree. This can give you a huge boost to your life uh, and your whole party, especially at higher levels. It'll it'll double or more your max life. Uh, for shapeshifting, uh, I've tried shapeshifting before. It's pretty cool. Some people like to play this, but I really I prefer uh, to go to the Elemental Tree when I start. Uh, these first three skills for fire are awesome. They all synergize with each other and add damage. So I usually go for Firestorm and Molten Boulder and Fissure when starting out a Druid. And then finally, the assassin here. Uh, I never was a fan of the martial arts tree, so I don't generally go martial arts. Shadow Disciplines has a lot of useful skills. Uh, for movement speed and attack, it has burst of speed. And then if you need more resistances, you can use fade. Uh, you're going to want to probably pick up either Shadow Warrior or Master to make a copy of yourself to fight with you. And then Mind Blast over here is super amazing. You're fighting a big group of monsters, cast Mind Blast, and like half of them might just turn and start fighting the other ones. So this gives really good crowd control. And then traps are super powerful. Uh, eventually you go through the lightning tree down to lightning sentry, and you'll just be using this mostly along with maybe one death sentry. So that's how I play assassin down into the lightning tree. Okay, so we've covered the classes and skills some, so now I want to take a look at just a few quick general tips to help every character. So, much like the Sorceress has a static field, like I mentioned, where it takes off a big chunk of life, especially against bosses, if you're a melee character, you can look for a special property on some items called Crushing Blow, and this works very similar to Static Field in that every time you swing your weapon, it has a chance of landing Crushing Blow, like these boots give me a 25% chance for that to trigger. And when it does, it takes off a percentage of life from the monster. So it's very effective against bosses or monsters with lots of life to kill them very quickly. And you can actually make some of your own weapons. If we take a look at some runes here, runes will drop and they do different things to items, uh, to weapons, to armor, whatever it might be. You need to find an item like this with open sockets in it, like this one has five sockets. So you can place runes and gems and jewels in there to power them up in different ways. Now, if you put runes in a specific order, it will create a rune word. So for instance, this armor had two sockets. I put the runes Tal and Eth, and instead of just doing those simple bonuses, it's a specific rune word called stealth to give better bonuses. Uh, another one here at level 13, you can make a two socket melee weapon called steel with a real fast attack that's pretty good. And then another one with that crushing blow I just mentioned is called strength in a two socket weapon that's am tier, that's level 25. So you can kind of build your own weapons if you don't get something to drop that you want to. Another good way to power up your character is to look for items that give plus to skills. And you can find these out battling monsters or opening chests or whatnot, but you can also shop them from the vendors. So if I come to Akara here, you can see she sells lots of weapons here. For instance, here's a Necromancer wand, and you can see it gives several points to some of his skills. Or these Paladin Scepters. This one will give plus one to Might. This will give plus one to Cleansing. Sorceress Staves. These can also boost. There's a plus three to Static Field. Uh, here's a plus one to Frozen Armor. So if you have specific skills you like to use, you can simply go to a vendor and shop for some of those items to boost those skills. Also, as you progress through Normal and into Nightmare, you're going to want to watch your resistances. If you come into your character sheet, you can see your resistances to each element. And if you don't up those, you're going to die very easily eventually. So you can also buy things for that from a vendor. Uh, for instance, here's a hat that gives six to fire resistance. So if you're low on lightning or low on fire, which are the most two dangerous elements, I would say, you might come to a shop and buy some things to try to increase those. And then a couple final general tips here. Uh, one, just how I like to organize my potions in my belt. If I'm playing a close attacker, like a melee fighter, I prefer to have two healing one mana, and then rejuvenation. And if you don't know the difference, uh, the healing fills your life, the blue fills your mana, uh, and this is an over time thing, so it slowly fills it up, whereas a rejuvenation will fill both, and it's an instant heal. And then the last tip I'll mention is just about kiting enemies. If you don't know what kiting is, it's where you pull enemies along that are maybe more dangerous. Uh, like if these guys are too powerful for me, I don't want to get surrounded by them, 
So I'm going to just pull them back slowly and kind of string them out so maybe I only have to fight one at a time. So like right there, I could fight one instead of three at once. And if you're a ranged character, you obviously want to keep your distance anyway. But it is also possible as a melee to kind of back away, hit one, back away, so that way you don't get surrounded too much at once. Okay, so now that we've got a lot of the general tips out of the way and talked about each of the classes and some of the skills, let's get into more specific, and we'll start here with Act 1. So first I'm going to take a look at the quests, and not all quests are required in the game. Some quests are optional, and a lot of these are, but I'm going to go through and recommend the specific ones that you're going to definitely want to do. So this first one here, Den of Evil, you'll want to do, you get a free skill point from this, and if you do want to respec your skills, she will also allow you to respec your skills once after you complete this. Uh, the Sisters Burial Grounds will give you your first mercenary for completing that. This one, you rescue Deckard Kane, and he will identify all of your items for you. You're going to want to do that. This one is the Forgotten Tower, and this one is a good way to farm runes. If you did want to make rune words, you could kill the Countess over and over from this quest. Uh, tools of the Trade, don't really have to do. I generally skip that one. Uh, but eventually you can come back and, and get a decent item maybe from that. And then the last one is story-related to fight Andariel. If you felt like you were too low or too weak, you might power up here by going to the Stony Field. After you complete that third quest to save Deckard Kane, you can come back to the Stony Field here, and the portal to Tristram will still be open. So I'm going to run over here and go through the portal back to Tristram. And you're going to watch out for Rakanishu there, the blue guy. He's always lightning enchanted, and that lightning can be pretty dangerous, so I would just be cautious for him. But you can run back into the portal here and level up very easily. There's lots of elites in here to kill and lots of monsters very quickly. And this is really popular, actually, to power up a new character. You can run through here with a good group and just clear out the town very quickly to power up pretty easily to level 15 or so, and then the experience will start to drop off. So if you wanted to get a little stronger, get more skill points, then I recommend coming and doing some Trist runs here. And then down here at the end of Act 1, I'm here in Catacombs, level 4, ready to fight Andariel, the final boss. So one thing I'll recommend for that, she has a really strong poison, so you can just go to town and buy some antidote potions from the shop, and you can drink those before the fight, and it will boost your poison resistance also. Um, so I've already cleared out that first room, so I would come in here and clear out these initial enemies as well, and then eventually you'll work your way up close enough, and it will pull her down. See, there's still quite a few other enemies, and I don't want to get surrounded here, so you could do your kiting method that I mentioned, and if it's too much going on here, I'll just run back to this room and she'll follow me down here, but I won't have as much of that other stuff to deal with. So, And if you're fighting her and you run out of potions or you need to go back and heal, don't be afraid to do a town portal and just leave. Come back to town, grab some potions if you need to, heal up. When you're ready, go back in and she won't have regained any health, and then you can resume the fight against her. And don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, uh, any boss act who has a lot of health, especially some of the later ones, make sure you use Static Field if you're a Sorceress or you have a Sorceress in your party, or if you can, get some Crushing Blow. Uh, that's also very helpful, so don't forget about those. Okay, let's, let's take a look at some specifics for Act 2. Uh, first off, the quests. The only one that's optional is this first one, Radom and Slayer, but you're going to want to do this one because it's another free skill point for completing it. And then the rest of these are all story-related quests that you have to complete in order to progress. And then this act, you're going to want to start thinking about resistances, especially lightning. Uh, like if we pop over here to the Far Oasis, for instance, these beetles can be really dangerous. When you hit them, they shoot out lightning like that, and that can really tear through your health a lot. This act also has some poison areas that could be dangerous, but I think the main threat is the lightning. Another enemy that's pretty dangerous are the Vipers. So you'll definitely run into them here when you enter the Claw Viper Temple for that part of the story. Uh, there are these snake guys that can really rush you fast, and a lot of them will hit you pretty quick, and it can be real dangerous as they, as they charge into you. So heads up for them. Again, you can kind of back away and kite them so you're not getting surrounded like we talked about. If you feel underpowered in this act, uh, this, there's a lot of good places to level, but this is another very popular one. Once you reach the final area, the Canyon of the Magi, much like the Trist runs from Act 1, people would do tomb runs. There are seven tombs around the edge of this area, and people will just go into each tomb and clear out the tomb and then move on to the next one steadily. So they would jump in here, kill everything inside, pop out, run over here to the next one, clear everything out and just work their way around to power up. And you can do that pretty comfortably into your 20s. 
And then the final boss of Act 2 is Duriel, which could cause a lot of trouble for people. Uh, it's got a cold aura called Holy Freeze, which is what a paladin has too, and it freezes everything around it to slow you down, and Duriel can hit pretty hard too. Uh, one thing you can do, much like Andy with the antidote potions, you can buy thawing potions and drink those before you go in to boost your cold resistance. And uh, you can even keep some of those on hand, maybe in your belt, to, to hit them as you move along the fight. Um, and then I recommend just trying to stay away as best you can. Duriel's pretty fast. You can see that blue aura, and I'm ticking for cold damage. So try to keep your distance if you can. Again, uh, static field or crushing blow if you happen to have any. And again, if you're fighting and you run out of potions, you're in trouble, you can drop a town portal. You know, just run around, get back to your town portal to escape for a little bit. This one does cause a little extra problem because it's such a small area to fight Duriel. Um, but it is possible to, to exit and come back in and then finish Duriel off. Okay, let's move on to Act 3 here. So numbers 3, 5, and 6 of the quests are all part of the story. You have to do them to complete it. And the other ones are optional, but you I probably want to do them. Number 1 here, the Golden Bird rewards you with a permanent upgrade to your health of 20. Uh, this next one, the Old Religion, or the Gidbin, will give you a rare ring and the ability to hire Act 3 mercenaries. Uh, that's usually right by the Flayer dungeon, so it's really easy just to complete it anyway. And then the other one, Lamasan's Tome, uh, is in the Kuras Bazaar, and this will give you five extra stat points. And then just some quick tips for Act 3. Uh, one of them I would say continue to build your fire and lightning resist if you can. And then be careful, these little flare guys in some spots can really swarm you really fast. You'll get, you'll just get a screen full of them. So if you have something that hits multiple enemies, it's not a big deal. But otherwise you can really get surrounded and can cause a lot of trouble. And the first few areas in this act can be pretty confusing. The spider forest, the great marsh, and the flare jungle. So if you needed help, I do have video guides for each of the quests in the entire game. But these ones specifically can be kind of weird how those maps connect to each other. Uh, but then towards the end, when you get through all those and into the Trevincle, uh, this is going to be towards the end of the quest line for the main story. You're going to come up to this area, and the council members are up here. They can be pretty dangerous. They're going to cast a lot of hydras for fire damage. There's dudes in the water here that will come out and poison you. The council themselves, there you can see they just cursed me. They're shooting a bunch of hydra at me, and some of them can freeze you as well. So if you need to, like I've said before, you can just kite, you know, try to stretch them out, bring them back, and fight just one or two at a time to make it easier on yourself. And just kind of take it easy. If you need to, back away, run away, go back to town to heal or refill potions. Uh, but steadily, you know, work them down and be cautious, I'd say. And then after the Trevinkle and the Council, you're going to work your way down through the Durance of Hate levels. And sometimes you run into these little guys, these little skeleton dolls, sticky and dolls, and they can be really nasty. Normal's not too bad, but Nightmare in Hell especially, they can come up and just one-shot you, whether they attack you or you attack them. So a lot of times, I'll let my mercenary go forward and fight them and take the hit, uh, just so that way I don't die. And then down here on the Durance of Hate level 3, this is the final area, the map's always the same. You're going to find more council members and some blood lords. There's usually a lot of fire going on like this. You see meteors raining down and the Hydra. So again, try to buff up your lightning and fire resist if you can. And take your time with these guys, you know, kite them back some. Just try to fight a couple at a time if you can. And then as you run over here, you're going to come up to Mephisto. And he uses some poison and some cold attacks. So same as the other bosses, if you have static field or crushing blow, try to use that to get him down fast. Uh, otherwise, uh, just you can be cautious again if you need to back off and heal. If you need to go back to town with the town portal, you can and come back and try to finish him. Uh, and then that's it. Oh, and the exit to Act 4 is right over here. Uh, this bridge will pop up to let you get to this portal. I had a couple people ask me about that. So that's how you get to Act 4. And then on to Act 4 here, and this is a short act. It's only like half as big as the others, so it only has three quests, actually. So you're going to want to do them all. This first one, the Fallen Angel, you will go fight Izuul, and it will reward you with two skill points, which is awesome. 
Uh, the next one is to destroy Mephisto's Soul Stone. And this one you're going to want to do solo to actually complete the quest. If you're with friends, I recommend you wait and do it solo because it rewards you with a rune. Especially on Nightmare in Hell, it can be sometimes a very good rune as a reward. And if you do it at the same time, you'll still only get just one reward rather than multiple. And then the last one is to fight Diablo. It's story related. You can't miss it. As you're progressing through this, uh, the second area you'll come to is the Plains of Despair. This is where Isuel is for that first quest. And this also might be where you first encounter some burning souls. It's these like ghost enemies that shoot lightning like crazy. And they're probably one of the most hated enemies in the game because uh, they can really rip through your health fast. So again, hopefully you've been building up your lightning and fire resistances. Uh, here they are. They move kind of invisibly, and they just shoot that lightning at you, and it can really tear through your health fast. So, again, make sure that you're uh, building up your resistances as best you can. And Izzy out here, Izuel, has cold enchanted, so uh, just be aware of that. You might want to bring some thawing potions or, or be prepared to be frozen and have a slow fight. And then here we are towards the end of the act. We're in the Chaos Sanctuary, and this could be a pretty dangerous place, too. There's a could be a really nasty combination of enemies here. You've got these guys, the Swarm Casters, that will drain your mana. You've got, like, Abyss Knights and Doom Knights that will curse you with some pretty nasty curses. You've got Casters shooting at you. You have these Venom Lords that will rush you as pretty strong melee. So, again, I would say just take your time in here. If you rush forward a little bit, and then pull back to string them out and kite them, like I've said, to hopefully only fight a few at a time, that would be definitely a good call. And as you move through the Chaos Sanctuary, you're going to come across these seals that you have to hit. And when you do, it's going to spawn specific unique enemies. And they're always the same, but they can be very dangerous also. So again, if you need to back away to only fight a couple at a time and be cautious, you know, you can always go back to town and refill potions or, or whatever you need to do. And then the final boss of the act is Diablo himself, and he's got some pretty nasty moves. That lightning move right there is really dangerous. You don't want to stand at that. That's the other dangerous one right there, the fire on the ground. So move around. Do not stand still because uh, it can really tear through your health quickly. And again, as I've said, hopefully you've been working up your fire and lightning resistances. Um, and same as the other ones, if you've got Static Field or Crushing Blow, try to use those to eat his health away very quickly. If you need to go back to town, don't be afraid to use a portal. Go back and rest, refill potions, uh, until you eventually work him down. Okay, so here we are in Act 5, the final act of the game. The quests here, um, you'll want to do them all except for this one here, the Betrayal of Haragath. This one... As far as I know, the reward is to personalize an item, which is ultimately pointless, so it's not really necessary to do that one. Um, this first quest, though, Larzik will add sockets to an item of your choice as a reward, and that one, I would hold on to that reward until Nightmare or even Hell, because uh, that's a really powerful reward for some, some items. Um, and then the rescue on Mount Ariat. This one, you're going to go rescue some barbarians. That reward is he will give you three runes, actually. He's going to give you a Rao, an Ort, and a Tal. And he's trying to teach you how to make a rune word called Ancient's Pledge, which you can use in a three socket shield. And this one I just bought from the Act 2 blacksmith. And so you can throw it into a shield to make a really powerful rune word called Ancient's Pledge, and it gives you, you can see there's some really good resistances, 40 plus to all elements. Uh, so I highly recommend that. And then you're going to want to do this one too, the Anya quest, where you save her and you will get a resistance scroll, which will give you a permanent boost to all your resistances of 10. Uh, and then Rite of Passage is the Ancients, and then this is Bale. These two are story, and you can't skip those. Here we are towards the end of Act 5. This is the fifth quest, the Rite of Passage, where you're going to fight the Ancients, which are these three barbarian defenders. To start the quest, you're going to activate this altar, and they're all three going to rush you. And this one, again, if you have Static Field as a sorceress, use that. Or if you happen to have any Crushing Blow uh, as a melee character, equip that to take off big chunks of their life. Hopefully you've got maybe a couple friends that can help you and spread them out, because uh, if all three get on you, it can be pretty challenging, especially in Nightmare or Hell, if you don't have good resistances and defenses. Uh, otherwise, just try to kite them, like I've said before, make some room, you know, run around and spread out. At least there's a big area to be able to move here, but this is the one time that you can't use the method like the other bosses, where if you're getting in trouble uh, and you want to run back to town, 
with the town portal, it'll actually stop the instance like that and reset the quest and you have to start over. So you can't leave the area once you start, you can't cast the town portal. So be sure you have plenty of potions and whatnot stocked up before beginning. And then the final area here, uh, you'll go through five waves against Bale's minions. And uh, they always spawn up at the top like that. He'll laugh between each wave. I recommend staying back a little bit because Bale will actually curse you with Decrepify so you can't hardly move. You're slowed down and you take extra damage. So I usually prefer to stay back here as much as I can to avoid that. Uh, and then uh, you'll just go through the five waves. The first two are pretty straightforward. That second one will poison you pretty badly. So you can always run back to town if you want through a portal or bring an antidote potion to help you with that. Uh, to heal. See there, Bale got with, with Decrepify, so I'm moving really slowly now. There, got me with Decrepify again, so that's what you want to avoid. And then these last couple waves are more powerful minions. They'll rush you with some of the uh, like Pit Lord guys from Act 4. Venom Lords. And then Act 5, or I'm sorry, Wave 5, are his Minions of Destruction, which are specific to this area, which can be really dangerous. So again, just try to spread them out, kite them as best you can. If you need to, you know, back away to try to only fight a couple at a time. Uh, and then after you clear them, you'll be able to go through his portal to actually face off against Bale himself. And then as we go into fight Bale here in the World Stone Chamber, uh, similar to the other bosses, Static Field and Crushing Blow if you have it. He teleports around, he'll do a clone of himself. Uh, he can put out some pretty good damage. He uses that blue V move to push you back. He'll burn your mana down uh, with this like fire looking move. Let's see if I can get him to do it here. Oh, maybe he doesn't want to do it. Uh, but anyway, work him down. If you need to go back to town, you can always use the town portal, head back to town, uh, and take a break from him. Uh, anyway, that's it. Work him down and finish him off to, uh, to end the game. And that's it. Congratulations. You've defeated normal difficulty. So Tyrael is going to come down from the ceiling. You talk to him, and he'll congratulate you. He's going to open up a portal called Destruction's End. And when you enter that, it's actually going to kick you from the game, uh, but it will congratulate you, and it's going to unlock Nightmare Difficulty. Now, Nightmare Difficulty is definitely harder. Uh, the enemies are stronger, they have more health, they're higher level, and your resistances are automatically decreased. You get a penalty to your resistances as you enter into Nightmare. So before moving on, I recommend powering up. I imagine at the end of this playthrough, you'll be around level 30, but you can easily push into 40 or higher, and you're going to need better gear probably as well. So I'll give you some tips on that. So some tips to power up to prepare for Nightmare. I recommend just farming some certain areas. My favorites are to go to Act 3, the Trevinkle, and run over and kill the Council there. Uh, they can drop some pretty good items and loot uh, to power up and hopefully get you some better gear. And then I also like to go just to Act 5, the Frigid Highlands. You can run up to the top from the waypoint and kill Eldritch. He's a unique right up here to find some gear, and then you can run down south of it, uh, the guy from the first quest, Shink, and you can kill Shink also to find some drops. And these guys give good experiences also to start to power up. And then the last one I recommend is just to simply head towards Bale again. Uh, people do Bale runs on all difficulties because it's such good experience and such good drops. So you would just teleport to the World Stone level 2. And actually, the World Stone 2 and 3 are good drops and good experience too. So I wouldn't speed through. I would take my time and clear them out. And just going through World Stone 2 and 3 and doing Bale's... Uh, minions can get you a full level each time. So it's a real quick way to level up and get some better gear. And then even if you can't defeat Bale's minions and him very easily, you could just go as far as you can, stop, and then start a new game and do it all over again. So you can easily get up to level 40 or 45 even uh, and hopefully get some better gear as well before progressing on to Nightmare Difficulty. 
So now you've leveled up a bunch. You're maybe level 40 or even 45 off of bail runs and whatnot. And it's time to decide on your skills. So before you move on to Nightmare, you definitely want to choose one or two skills to focus on that are going to be your damage dealing skills. And ideally, it would be something for single target and multi target since you know you get swarmed by big groups of monsters often. If you need to, you can come to Akara. And from that first quest, she'll give you the option to respec to uh, you know reset your stat and skill points. And if you need to, I recommend doing that. And then going into your skills and just finding the skills that you like and powering them up as much as possible. So my paladin here is level 38. Uh, I've finished uh, hardcore normal, and I'm trying to level him up some to move into nightmare. So I've come and respect and I'm putting all my points into Holy Freeze. I've got it maxed, and you'll see there it shows its synergy at the bottom. Resist Cold gives 15% damage, and Salvation will give 7% damage bonus. So I've also boosted that Resist Cold for all that damage. I've got 15 points in that. So I come over here, and my attack is way stronger, and my Holy Freeze aura will do a good pulse damage for everything around me. So it's important that you really pump up one or two skills so you have enough damage to kill enemies efficiently in Nightmare. As far as stat points go, uh, the same kind of mantra has been around for a long time. Really strength, you just want enough to be able to wear your gear. Dexterity, if you need more for attack rating to hit things, or if you're trying to block with a shield, you'd want more dexterity. And then everything else is going to go into vitality. Energy isn't necessarily needed uh, because as you level up, you'll get more max energy. So that's generally left at zero. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully this was helpful to some of you, especially new players or maybe returning players. That's It's been a while for. Uh, and if you had any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to put them down there. I love talking about Diablo. I love to help people. So if you had any specific concerns or questions about character skills or builds, please ask that, and I'd be happy to give some recommendations or further help for whatever you need. So anyway, thanks again for watching. If this helps you, I'd love a, a like or a subscribe, and I will see you next time.